Senator uh, Warner from Virginia is recognized from his office. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director Chopra, it's good to at least see you remotely. Um, I've got three questions in separate areas, so I'll try to be quick on the questions so you can have time to answer. First, um, you know, we've seen a number of the major banks start to outsource uh, a, a number of their back office procedures, um, mass data storage, cloud computing, and a host of other applications are now being outsourced. It makes, in many cases, good business sense. I do worry, though, from a, a regulatory standpoint and a consumer protection standpoint, as these traditional in-house applications are outsourced, do you feel like you or the other regulators have enough visibility uh, into the um, these outsourced functions? Um, are, are there additional tools that are being needed? Could you, could you speak to that? Yeah, I, I do think it's a business imperative often to, you know, find service providers, outsource to stay competitive. At the same time, we hear from some community banks that there are sometimes only four core service providers. We see three major cloud providers, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft, Azure, and Google Cloud. That does create some resilience issues should there be an attack or a shock. It's important that the regulators have visibility. I don't think we do enough now, but we are working with the other regulators to make sure that we can withstand a shock, potentially even if it's a state or non-state actor that attacks. Well, I'm, I'm interested not only from the kind of uh, potential for a state or non-state actor in the cyber domain, but I'm also concerned that you are about the concentration uh, of some of these services and, you know, if the community bank says, hey, not our problem anymore because we outsourced it to Entity X, do we have visibility into what is still a critical component of the whole banking system? So I hope we can continue that, com Absolutely. that conversation. The, the second, I know you mentioned this in your testimony, and this is around payment systems um, for big tech. Uh, again, an area where we're seeing both consolidation and, and potentially growth of opaqueness. Um, when do you think that uh, review of some of the payment systems around B te big tech will be done. And then I'd like you to, as you answer that, more specifically address, I'm particularly current concerned on a national security standpoint of some of the um, Chinese models around Alipay and WeChat Pay. Uh, and are you, you know, looking at not only payment systems in the more American and Western big tech companies, but also in the Chinese companies? Yes, Senator. And in my testimony, I mentioned how the U.S. consumer finance ecosystem appears to be lurching toward a, a Chinese-style market structure. And that really is a concern for a lot of small institutions, a lot of startups. What we see with WeChat Pay and Alipay, I don't think is a, a structure we necessarily want to replicate. We will be reporting um, on some of our analysis around the Chinese models, as well as what we're learning in our own study about payments, I am actually quite optimistic that the new FedNow service, which will give small institutions, small banks more ability to offer some of those real-time payment services that are not yet available to the United States. So it is something that is concerning, especially when it comes to privacy, and we look forward to reporting to all of you on our findings. Well, I'm very anxious to follow up with you on that. I, I feel like particularly um, pre-COVID, as, as we saw an enormous emergence of Chinese tourism around the world, that particularly in Europe, that the default system may become the WeChat or Alipay system. Uh, and I think that has the potential both in terms of digital yuan and a host of other privacy and other issues that if that becomes default outside of China and other parts of the world, you know, where does that put us uh, in, a, in the hierarchy? So I hope we'll come back to that. Last, last question. I saw you came out recently with a, a report on uh, financial challenges facing rural communities. Um, you know, I think some of those challenges may be addressed because those of us who worked on the bipartisan infrastructure bill, we're going to be able to finally get the broadband capabilities so no community should be left behind. But um, uh, both in terms of the fact that folks in rural communities disproportionately work for small businesses, so they may have bigger challenges around credit scores, and also the, the lack of, of uh, uh, online banking services offered in rural communities. Uh, can you, in these last uh, 
few seconds address what your report has found and where we need to do some more work? Yeah, there are serious challenges facing rural banking right now. Um, I think uh, across multiple administrations, the regulators have been a little bit blind on this. Rural communities need banking in a very different way than metropolitan areas, particularly family farmers who are dealing with you know, commodity spikes or you know, various exogenous factors. We need to preserve relationship banking even as we need to use technology to serve people better. There's a broad range of issues from banking deserts to appraisals and more. We need to all figure out what we want to do to make sure that rural counties have access to small business credit, to farm credit, and consumer credit. So, Senator, I, I, I'm eager for us to work hard on this and address those problems. And, Mr. Chairman, I know my time's up, but I do think, we, as you, we all know, we're seeing the diminution of branch banking. And uh, I think the, the idea of, of banking deserts, as just as we've kind of discovered the concept of food deserts, is something that um, we as a committee ought to take a look at. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As, as we should, Senator Warner. Thank you.